Um, I'm in a good mood. My wife wouldn't let me come unless I dress somewhat decent, she said. So since I was going to give a presentation. Uh, I'm from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. I'm a Steeler fan. I left Pittsburgh when I graduated my school and went in the service. I fought for a few years. 25 years later, I left the service. So I, that's mainly what I did. And after I got out of the service, um, I came to Rhode Island. I got an offer for a job. Came up here to Rhode Island. And uh, I've been here ever since. So that's kind of a little bit of my background. Uh, done woodworking. Um, when I was in the military, they had shops where you could go and work and build things. So that's where I got interested. Actually, I take that back. High school, I started. I, when I was in high school, our school didn't have woodworking. And there was a public school. I, was, I went to a Catholic school. I was, got beat up by the nuns. Um, but they had a local public school that we would go to for drafting, woodworking, and auto mechanics. So on a, every Friday, you would go to, we'd go march in the group down the street and go to the public school and take those classes. That's where I got into the woodwork. I made one hell of a door stop when I was in high school. That was the project that we made while I was there. So that kind of got me started. Now, since then, uh, I've, I live here in Rhode Island now, and I have a shop in my basement. Uh, over the years, I've accumulated a lot of tools. I don't buy any tools anymore because I don't need any more. I have too many. I have all the old tools. I go to Home Depot and look at the tool they have, and it's the same one I own at home, but it's improved, has a new light in it, and has easy, quick disconnect. I have the old stuff, but I'm not about to buy anything new. So that's just the kind of way it goes. Um, I like to make furniture. Uh, I've made quite a bit of furniture uh, for my grandkids, uh, for my, my own kids, my own house. I think I have 35 pieces in my house that I made, and um, good enough for me to keep in my house. I sold a few things for a while, and then that got old because um, I didn't like having the pressure to get things done at a certain time for having commitments to have stuff for sale. Um, anyhow, let me, get, let me get to what I'm going to do tonight. Um, when I make furniture, uh, I, I tried cutting hand-cut dovetails, and it, I can do it, and I can do some pretty good dovetail. But when I build a piece of furniture, like a five-drawer chest of drawers, five times four corners times eight dovetails. Can't hand cut that many, way too many. <laughs> so I came up and I, I found this. Uh, actually, I watched a guy do a demo on one of these. And when I saw that, I thought, that's what I need. So over the years, I've used it quite a bit. Um, this one I have here is a border cable. Uh, this is the deluxe model. You can do line dovetails, through dovetails, block joints, and sliding dovetails on this set. Um, I went ahead and got the quarter cable router to match it. Just, uh, I don't know, I just uh, thought that's what I would do. Um, and I, in a magazine one day, I saw a stand that a guy made because I was using this on my bench. That got old. So when I saw this, I decided this is what I'm gonna do. So when I put this on my bench, that's about how high it is. Actually, I think it might be a little bit higher on my bench at home. And I made it the height so I could see what I'm doing real easy. That helps a lot instead of bending over all the time. And the next thing I came up with was, which I'm going to attach, a chip catcher. I saw this in a magazine and a guy uh, explained how to make it. And it's made out of plywood and press board. So I, I took a square of plywood. I took my scroll saw, jigsaw, and I think I used both of them. And I cut out the design that they showed in the magazine. And I drilled a hole in the bottom. This is an adapter off of um, a Porter Cable um, chop saw. It catches the sawdust. You know, those little hooks on the back. It has a little bag that's useless. So I got rid of the bag and I used the connection in here. And then I attached it back in post to it. Again, um, the one in the magazine, he, he said to buy, he, he said an attachment you could buy. Mine's um, kind of unique on the fact that I have to use a high-tech method to connect to it. It's called the tape. So once I put my vacuum on hose on here, I got a tape. That's kind of what I do. Kind of like the phone you mean? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Just like the same. I only got tape absolutely green today. Home Depot caught me one day and they told me they were doing a demo how great this is for painting. 
because the paint won't leak behind it. Uh, that's bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> so it works really well when I go to tape up my vacuum hose. That's the best I can do. This so uh, I've got a couple of them here that I made earlier. Uh, this is a blind dovetail. Point it this way. Um, and what I want to do tonight. Just point it this way. Point it right there. Okay. Yep. What I want to do go. tonight is duplicate this. So. Uh, I normally use poplar for drawers. High-end furniture will have oak drawers occasionally. Um, they will have maple on the inside of the drawer. I like to use poplar and I don't paint it, I don't stain it, I put a finish on it and it shines and it, it turns it a little bit yellow. And I use clear when I, when I spray it. And uh, that's what I like. And then I put a fascia drawer on the front of it. They can either make one, you can take this, and maybe use an inch and three quarter, put that in my router, and I can cut on the back side so it will fit on the drawer. I did that a few times and I didn't care for it. I, it's a lot of work. I didn't think it looked that great. And I had a hell of a time always fitting it in. I had to constantly cut the sides. And after a while, it didn't look right. It was off too much. So instead of doing that, I make my box. When I make my box, I just put my facer on the front of it. And now I can design that any way I want. I can make it bigger, smaller. I can make it go inside, or I can make it bump up against the desk or drawer or whatever I make. So when it goes up, it stops right here. I kind of like that better. And it's a different material. I'll, I'll match whatever the desk or the dresser or the chest of drawers made out of. That facial board will be the same wood as the dresser, but not the drawer itself. I mean, I don't want to spend, I don't want to use prime oak on a drawer. Although the good quality furniture, they do do that. What we got here tonight is I'm going to lay out right here. We need four pieces. This is what the drawer is going to look like generally. It goes together. And anytime you're using this system, the guidance tells you, you got to add a fourth inch. So every time you make a drawer, whether the drawer is going to be 12 inches high, so you can stack files in it, or it's going to be three inches high, where you can put books in it, or an inch and a half where you put pencils, like in the center of the slide. But whatever you use, you add one fourth of an inch to the board. So whatever the, this right here is four and one fourth. This one is three and one fourth. And I like to use blind dovetails because measurement is a lot easier than through dovetails. If you do through dovetails, you have to constantly add and subtract the dovetail itself. And I, you know, it's just to me, I found it was easier to use blind dovetails. Almost all furniture anyway has blind dovetails. Through dovetails are normally for boxes where you can see the outside, not so much for furniture. So, um, there's four pieces, the two sides, the front and the back. I usually decide what's going to be the front. I'll lay it out this way because this is going to be my front. And I'm going to treat this a little bit different than the other pieces because I want to round all it over to make it look nice when I'm done. But I don't want to round over the front of this one because the face of board is going to go up against it. So this is my layout. I'm going to mark it A, A. Both of these are A. This one's going to be B, B. This one's going to be C. This one's going to be D. C should be over here. D should be here. Make the markings at the bottom. And there's a reason for that, and I'll tell you shortly. D. So now I've got an A, B, C, and D. And I'm going to put it in the router. Um, these things make a mess. Whenever you're doing any uh, dovetails on here, it throws chips everywhere. So, what did I do with my It's over here. Did I already talk about this? No. <laughs> I don't remember. Uh, did I say it? Yes. Yeah, okay. Well, anyhow, well, yeah, I'm going to put this on. Probably should have put it on earlier, but. 
door, right? These um, routers do come with um, dust collection, the dust collection on the handle. It's about useless. Very, I don't find it very helpful for dust collection. So that's why I came up with, uh, with this. And I have to put it on right. I don't put it on right, I'll have the sawdust in my eyes. Yes, that one's tight. If I had to do this again, um, I would probably make this piece plexiglass instead of uh, pressed board. That way I could see through it. That would help a lot. But since I made this and I went over to uh, Woodcraft, I found that Lee makes their own jigs, their own uh, dovetail jigs, and they made an attachment for the Porter cable because these things are very popular. There's millions of these things were sold. And this attachment, which I haven't tried yet, attaches on here and it has a sleeve underneath it. I don't know how well it'll work, but I'm going to find out. When I saw it, I thought, oh, well, I'll buy it. Uh, what was the price? $79. You know, whether I did a good deal or not, I'll find out. Anyhow, I'll just I tell you that they have this. If I was to buy this unit again, if you can get it online, right now I've looked on Craigslist, I've looked on um, some of the other uh, the lines of self um, tools, and these things are going for about anywhere from 85 to $110. That's a hell of a good deal. Because when I bought this one, it was $180. So there's a lot of them out there. There's guys like you and I, you pass away, your wife doesn't know what to do with it. Somebody tells her to put it on Craigslist. That's where you can get one. Hopefully I won't pass away yet. <laughs> you do, just let your wife know to send it to, send it to us. <laughs> you know, my wife keeps telling me, what are you gonna do with all those tools in the basement? And I said, I have an idea for you. This was when houses weren't selling well. I said, leave the shop exactly as it is and sell it with the house. Leave all the tools there. I guarantee you somebody will buy it. So now homes are hard to come by. Anyhow, let me go back to this. Um, I, I'm going to use my high-tech attachment here. Somewhere. Test it to make sure it's working. We should hear this and the vacuum come on at the same time. Uh -oh. I have to put a little more high tech attachment to it. Missed the bottom part. Thank you. I appreciate it. I don't want to come off so I'm going to relax. Okay, I'm going to try it out. I, I would stick my finger under there to make sure it was working, but I don't have enough guts right. to do that. <laughs> All right. Yeah, it has the slow start. So now when you, I'm going to pick.
inside. That's to make up for the room so the dovetails back. to the 16th of an inch high. I'm going to take a handle and I'm going to smooth off those dovetails. Make it perfectly smooth. And there's a little notch right here. Now that same thing applies to the two dovetails, box joints, and sliding dovetails. They all have a guide on them for you to adjust the depth of the product. Some of my high tech tape that yeah. might work better than yours. <laughs> Sure, this is a little more stretchy. Set. Okay, I'm gonna, where are we gonna okay. <laughs> it's Up against the corner, flush here, I'm gonna lock it down. And they recommend, and I also recommend it, I've taken a, this is a half inch, I've taken a half inch piece and put it over here on the far right. So it keeps the bar straight. If you don't do that, it has a tendency to tilt to down. And, and I've had occasion where this would just fall out if it wasn't tight enough. So I just tape those so they would stay. You can go anywhere from a fourth inch all the way up to an inch and a half with this jig. In other words, your board can be, this one is a half inch thick. It could be an inch and a quarter thick if you wanted to make it that thick, or it could be down to a fourth of an inch thick. Fourth of an inch is a little hard to keep together, but it is an option. So A is up here, and I'm gonna put my groove up. There's a little notch again where it's gonna go up against. Flush it up, make sure it's tight. It's not even, push it again. It is flush along the top. Before I route, I always look to make sure I'm flush against right here and I'm flush right up here. Very hard to see, so I like using the flashlight. And I can see a gap here, so I didn't get this tight enough. I think I got it. No gap now. No gap on that side, so nice and flush. I have trouble hearing, so I'm gonna take my hearing aid now. Sorry about that. Uh, I'll answer any questions you have now, but I can't hear a thing. <laughs> In fact, this is even better. This, this actually goes good with beer. Very quiet, mellow. Okay, I'm gonna... I have a mark here so I can see because I, I can't see through this. I, I would get that I should have done plexiglass, but I have a mark here and I know I'm gonna be cutting one, two, three, four. I gotta go five. So I bring it up, line it up with my mark. And I'm gonna turn it off. Usually you get a little bit of flare. Uh, an option which you could do is to put another board on here. 
uh, to stop this little bit. Of, I, I, that doesn't bother me. I don't use a board, but you could if you didn't want to have any chip out on the side. And it's usually, you can't even see any chip out there. Well, here. <laughs> there I just want to clean it up a little bit. Take this one out. This one will have more on it. A little fuzz in there that I want to get out. So all it takes is that little bit of fuzz to throw things off. Put it back. A, my next step is B. Line it up again. Tighten it up. I felt a little loose. B and B. Good here. Good here. Ready to go. And do it again. I wish you could see what it looked like without this collection on it. I mean, that it's, I get all over me, all over my pants, it's all over the floor. It's really, really a mess. This, this uh, vacuum system really helps. A little more tear out on that one. I'm just gonna, again, clean it up real quick. Notice how even they are. A little more clean it out. Ready to go. That's good to go. Go back, start over. I'm at C. Line it up again. Line up the top. Every once in a while, because of a, a board maybe warped, they don't want to match up perfectly. So you got to kind of push it and jiggle it and play with it and make sure you get them as tight as you can. Right here, smooth there. Thirty-two thousand RPM. That's pretty darn fast. And if you make a mistake, it, it'll run away from you. It'll fly that way, fly, pop right out of your hand. You won't be able to hold on. To it. So you kind of got to pay attention when you're using it. Always make sure it's shut off before you move it. It up a little bit. And I'm not above putting it in the wrong way. I've, I've done that. And I had my dovetail 
cocktails instead of being on the side they were on the end and you couldn't see them again you gotta just pay attention to what you're doing And this one up a little bit. The real test is when you put it together. Uh, now I could have put in the uh, put the first piece I cut together just to show you, but um, I don't want to take too much time. And I'm not going to put this one back. This is D. So now we're going to start over again. The last cut I'm going to make. Make sure it's up there tight. It's up against the side. It is right there. Good to go. Why do I keep putting that sandpaper over there? You can see the tear out here a little bit. If I stand up, I can not leave any chips or pull anything out of there and it comes right out. I've learned over the years, sand up, not down, because I don't want to peel it out. I want to knock it off. And pretty clean. When I got this, the first time I tried using it, I was concerned, a little bit worried. Um, I came to the guild here and, and uh, asked around to find if anybody had one of these, that maybe I could just go to their house and they could show me how to use it. Because the, the instruction manual, very, it's a little bit complicated. Uh, when you're reading it and trying to do it, it, it kind of, it's easier. Nowadays, though, you have YouTube. Just go to YouTube and watch somebody do it. Now let's see how it works. Make sure I'm putting the right parts together. With my little enforcer. That's the first one. Goes together pretty good. Even here, even here. And all of this is because of the setting for the for the router bit itself, the depth. I just realized I had those things on my head. And I didn't sound right. Okay, let me do the next one. Actually, uh, I'm kind of getting ahead of myself. Before I do that, this is a drawer that's complete. No on it. I'm going to take it apart. The reason I wanted to take it apart was I want to show you the, the, for the bottom to put the, the uh, bottom of the drawer in. I usually do it on my table saw and I always make sure I'm cutting on one of the pins. And the reason you cut on the pin is you can't see it once you put it together. If you don't cut on the pin, it's going to be visible. You're going to have a hole at the bottom of your drawer. But when it, you cut it, you can see you can't see it there, but there's a groove on the inside. And it's easy because you're running all the way through. You don't have to stop. You don't have to worry about being so many inches from the edge or millimeters or whatever. 
just run it on the table saw. I usually make two passes and I use a practice piece. I never use this first. I'll use a practice piece just like this, right? I took this piece and I run it through my saw with the, this is the, the bottom and I measured up against it and it wasn't big enough. So that's okay. So I readjusted my guide on my saw, make it a little wider, ran it through again. Second time, not, still not. So I had to do just a hair more. When I did the third time, and sometimes I screw up, it's too wide. Okay, throw that away and start over again with a practice piece until I get it right. So what I normally do is the first cut, <coughs> I'll make the first cut on my practice piece and all of those pieces, just the first cut, which is not big enough. And I keep adjusting into the pin because it's visible, invisible when it's, you can't see it on the second cut until it fits like that. You, you wanna have a little bit of wiggle room because it's gonna go in about um, 3 sixteenths. That's what I usually do. 3 sixteenths in here, 3 sixteenths on this edge. So if this is my drawer, it's inside 3 sixteenths all four corners. Sorry. How deep are you cutting the groove? To match this, right, the groove. So, so you got that exactly three sixteenths deep. And so three sixteenths deep. Your board is bottoming out inside the slot. Yeah, because you know what? When I buy this stuff, even at Home Depot, no matter where I get this, it's not always the same size. So I always do it individually, and I try to go in about three sixteenths, so I have enough room, and I want a little bit of room because I want it to jiggle just a little bit, not much. <laughs> the other thing I would do now that I've got it cut, um, I would take this and sand it before I put it together. I like to sand the inside and the backside. And now I've already got my groove cut in here. And when you cut your groove, it's over here. <laughs> I also found you can only take these things apart and put them back together so many times and they get too weak or too loose. So I try not to, once I make it, um, I'll put a little dab of glue, not much, just a small, cause I don't even want the glue to come through. I don't want to see it when I'm done. Just a dab of glue in the corner and then push this in and let it dry. And I do the ends first and then I slide my center drawer, uh, the bottom in, <coughs> then I do the top and just let it sit. And, and maybe the next day, um, I'll round, I usually run over the top. I'm gonna just put this thing together. I'm gonna put B to B. My course. Normally drop wood on the floor like that. It already had the slot cut in it. Slide the drawer in. Panel, not go up. Slide the panel in. And put this in on. It's a little difficult because you already have the bottom in there. <coughs> but these go in from now, I'm putting it in from the outside, so I'm squeezing in. Nice. And when you put the the panel in there, that ensures that it's square. That makes it a lot easier. And then the last thing I do, I wanna make sure this is proud. Feel that, Feel how, just a little bit proud. Feel how it is? What I would normally do is take it, I put it on my bench. Very similar to what I'm doing here. 
clamp it down. This doesn't clamp very well. There's a groove under there. Hang on. I take my hand blade. It's not tight. It's moving. That's all it takes. Now it's flush. And the last thing I'll do is uh, I'll do all four corners and I'll sand it. Gives me a real nice flush, smooth. And then when it's complete together, I take my portable rotter. I was going to do it here tonight. It makes such a mess. I'm going to skip it. And I route. I'll show you this one. This one. Camera. Yep. I will rot both sides here, both sides here, both sides here, and only the inside here. Leave this flat because that's where the fascia is going to go up against. And I attach the fascia. Normally, I'll drill from in here into it, and I'll put two screws, one on either corner. Or if it's even small, sometimes I don't even do that. I just put a handle there, and I put a longer attack bolt through there, screw it through, and that holds it in place because you got two screws in there and they're tight enough that nothing moves. I, I can look, look tell you from experience. And occasionally I'll put double sticky tape on there. If I'm doing it inside the drawer, in other words, it's not sticking out over the other side, this has got to go in flush. If it's going in flush, I use double sticky tape. But sometimes you got to adjust it a little bit. So what the nice thing about doing it with a fascia board is, you have the flexibility to adjust it, just a hair. Normally when I put a fascia board on, I put it flat on, on my workbench. Make sure it's, all I need is a flush at the bottom. That's all I'm looking for. You can make it, you can drop it a quarter of an inch or half inch if you wanna make your drawers to look that way. That's also an option. But I found my accuracy is much better when I have something that's level and flat and I'm working against it. And it gives me a little more accuracy as far as everything being level. And um, drawer slides, when I put them on, I always do put the drawer slides on here and I make them stop right at the edge. Sorry, I make a <laughs> drawer slide, which I don't have one here with me, but it would be along here and stop right there. And the drawer slide, I adjust it so when I put the screws to hold it in, it goes right in where this is. So it doesn't come through where you don't see it. And if it does come through, then I'll adjust it so it goes through the bottom and you can't see it when the drawer is in. But normally I can hit that because I know my drawer is right there, right on that. Uh, I, I cut it right through the middle here. And that's kind of it. Any questions? Some comments. Lee makes like this a, a jig, and all theirs are adjustable. And that's a fantastic idea. Hard as hell to figure out how to use. I mean, it is difficult. Every time I use one, I have to get the manual out. Right, Walter? Every time you got to get the manual out and try and figure out how how to space these things. I find that very difficult, <clears throat> so I don't use it very much. This I like this one. I've had if you buy one, call me. Come on over to my house. I'll show you. We'll practice once or twice so you feel comfortable, right, Walt? Right. Didn't we do that? Yep. And Walt made one. It came out. Is this the one you did? The small one. Yeah. The small, right no, there. The, the small one. Small. The real the small, small one. one. Oh, okay. That's what we did the practice on. That's what we did the practice on. Pass that around. That he did that on your first or second try. That was the first try we did. First try, following the directions. Put, that machine, yep. put a piece of board here. Keep everything straight. The whole idea is keep everything straight and tight. 
no registration. So when you're putting the board in, you're registering it. Against, right here. Against that? That one, yeah. Okay. Now, see, the height? that one's right here. So this one and that. So let me show you. This one, which is the side, you can see that right there. It's going to go against that, yeah. and it has to touch up here. Oh, it's touch up here. Okay. Yeah, that stops it. I see. Okay. And that's the height. Yeah. And that's going to match this. And I'm going to put this one in here, and it's going to touch on this side. Okay. And it has to be flush right there. So they're that, they're that much offset. Yeah. That that makes up that it actually comes it, it's off here, but it comes out even. Right. Gotcha. And then tighten it down. It's really critical that these. Right here, you can adjust these that this be tight because yeah. I've, I've been routing it and the board moved just a little bit. Yeah. Nothing fits. It's right. just you ruin everything. Yeah. Uh, and in all honesty, when I'm doing a dresser that has five or six drawers, I usually make two or three extra pieces to allow for a mistake. It's very easy to make a mistake. It's not a screw up, it's a mistake. A good woodworker can fix things. That's what the idea is. Okay, it didn't come out right, it's not the right measurement. Can I use it anyway? Then I'll use it. Or do I have to adjust it? I'll adjust it. I'm making a thing for the church. It's a, it's a Christmas tree. Now it's not really a Christmas tree, but it, is, it looks like, this is terrible to try and describe it. It has three round discs. And on the outside, it looks like a Christmas tree. And each disc gets bigger as it goes down. And the top one is only three inches. The middle one's about eight inches. The next one is about 11 inches. And the bottom was 14 inches round. And it's to put candy on. And the, the thing that looks like the tree is gonna be painted green. Now I'm working on that at home today, earlier today. And I put it together and had three sides, only two matched. <laughs> and I've been doing woodworking for 20 years. How the hell did I do that? It's easy, it happens all the time. That's part of woodworking. <coughs> that actually makes it interesting at sometimes, but it does not interest me when my wife's around. She says, what'd you do? <laughs> How come that doesn't look like that? I don't want to tell her. I said, that's in purpose. So, you mentioned earlier about the quarter inch extra. Can you explain that a little better? Um, the size of your drawer. Let's say you want to have a drawer. Height, yeah. The height of the drawer, let's say you want to have a two inch drawer. In order to have two inch, you have to, it, you can't do two inches. You have to do two and a quarter to make it come out even in the center. Because of this jig, it has to have that one fourth of an inch. So you, you could, cut that quarter off at the end? The no, end? you never cut it off. So your drawer is two and a quarter. So your drawer is two and a quarter, that's it. Or it's three and a quarter, or four and a quarter, five and a quarter. Yeah, make it two inch. Sure you can. Because you're making a one, one and three quarter inch drawer with the quarter inch of the hex. Yeah, and you have to remember that the fascia board, what did I do with that piece? Right. Well, let, let's say this is a fascia board. Right here. The fascia board, when your drawer, your drawer is only going to be about that high. So whether it's three inches or three and a quarter, so what? Doesn't matter because you're, this is always higher always higher. Think of your drawer at home, at a desk. When you open it up, the fascia, whatever's on the face of it, is always higher than the box that's behind it. And with this particular model, this one, it requires you to have that fourth of an inch. So everything will come out even. Uh, the Lee is adjustable. So you're adjusting these, the pins. So now you can say, well, I want it to be exactly three inches. Okay, then you adjust your pins to do that. So you could do it that way with the lead, but you can't do it with this. This just requires that extra foot. Yes, sir. So clarification here. Does this mean here your pins are all regular space? Yes. All regular space. Yes. Is that your only option or can you space them adjustable? That's that your, what you meant by adjustable? The only, yeah, it's the only option. So that's the lead jig. That's the advantage of the lead jig, yes. Another question for me. What is your router? One second. Four cable. Four cable router. Oh. I got the same. I bought the same one. Is it uh, not a 
I, I can give you my excuse here for hearing aids. I went to Vietnam and they tried to kill me. They got awfully close. That's why I can't hear. <laughs> and, and a loud noise sets me off sometimes. But other than that, quiet conversation, no problem. Go to a restaurant, I can't hear anything. You know, play the radio on, forget it. I can't make it out. Yeah. Uh, just, uh, and it's also but, getting old. Yeah. That, that probably has more to do with it now. But, question was what type of router are you using is that a one and a quarter one and a half uh the router bit no, no the, the router is still router itself. itself um this one i think is uh one and a half yeah one and a half uh a one a two inch uh two or a three just too fast too powerful for this because you're only cutting a little bit of wood and and in my opinion anything that's two and above better be stationary somewhere because they're scary. Yeah. You know, they're very powerful. So that's just me personally. This one I can handle. And, and this vacuum here, can, this could be attached here. It doesn't work very well. It ends up getting clogged. I like this better. Um, yes, sir. You just mentioned it. What is the bit that you use? You, use a you must use a duct. It comes with this. They, they, it's a seven degree comes with it. They, they not only sell you this, they give you the three bits that you will need. And they give you all the attachments, the sleeve that goes in here. It all comes with the kit. And I recommend that's what you get. If you buy one online, make sure it has the, you can buy the bits though, they're available. They're, they're not, they're like um, $18, I think. So I had to replace, actually I bought an extra one, especially the collar, because I have a collar on this right here. And on the actual, when I took it off, wherever it is, the plate from the bottom has the same collar on it. I just bought an extra one so I don't have to take this off every time I change that. And, and to be honest with you, I got about eight routers. Why? Because I get tired of changing router bits. <laughs> and the other is I can afford it. You know, after doing it so many years, you get tired of changing router bits. So I have certain router bits, like the one that's in my palm router here. I don't mean to make an advertisement, but I like rigid tools. I like their guarantee more than I do the tool. I have um, probably 15 tools from rigid and they're guaranteed for life. Think about that, guaranteed for life. I have drills from rigid and I've gotten three that didn't work out. I've gotten three extra batteries because they died. Try that with anybody else. Maybe somebody else out there does it, but Rigid does, and they, they really back it up. So I have my, my tools, even this one, that little battery in here, that's probably the second one I've gotten from them. It came with two. Even the batteries are guaranteed? Batteries are guaranteed. You walk in, you know where they have the rental? You got to put, you got to buy it first, obviously, and then you got to go online and register your tool. And once you do that, they guarantee it for life. And on the box, it actually says that. Look at the next time you're in Home Depot, look at any of their tool. They'll all have lifetime guarantee on it. And they really mean it. That it's, you know, they'll always carry rigid because they own the company. Home Depot and rigid are all in one. So I recommend their tools for that reason. If you don't like the feel of it, then buy something else. But just be aware, probably five years later, you're gonna buy, have to buy a new battery. And here you don't have to buy the battery. So I, I think I broke that rigid impact set, but I didn't register it. So now- Yeah, you're out of luck. I'm out of luck. Yeah, they only give you, I think, um, it's, it's, this makes it even tougher. Like 90 days, it's right on your sales thing. If you don't register it within a certain amount of time, you're out. And you can't buy a tool from somebody else, you're out. It doesn't work because they keep a register of all the numbers. Well, you have to turn that in. You do it online. But it's worth buying a tool from them and registering it if you're going to use it a lot. And I, I, this is my favorite. I use this all the time. It has a little light on it. You know, it's just as good as anybody else's, in my opinion. All it's going to do is turn. And you know, it'll go forward, it'll go backward. <laughs> Any other questions? 
you said you had eight rowers. I uh, probably have more, but yeah, I got eight. You don't want to buy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I do. I had, I had to borrow his. <laughs> you know why? I didn't want to change router things. You know? <laughs> I borrowed yours because I need to make an uh, 18 inch circle. And you had a jig attached to your router. Tell them the truth. You don't. When's the last time you used that? I can't remember. Yeah. But anyhow, I use it to make the this thing I was making with the Christmas tree. The bottom plate is so big I can't put it in my my bandsaw and cut it in a circle. I can only do 24 inches, of it, I think it is, on my bandsaw. And whatever it is, that that bottom plate is bigger than that. Anyhow. So Michael Feldman says he has the Rockler jig, and it's terrible. Uh, there's lots of plastic it's hard to keep it accurate and it's misery to use yeah so, I, this this to me i really buy one i'll show you how to use it you know if you don't have one but don't buy cheap ones uh they, they they're tough to deal with i got mine i got the same set i got mine princess yeah any other question do they still make them or i, I appreciate you allowing me to demonstrate this i I hope it was somewhat interesting. Um, hopefully, maybe you'll now realize it's not that difficult to make a drawer. It really isn't. And you know, once you make the drawer, all you got to do is build a box to make a desk or build a bigger box to make a chest of drawers. Not that difficult. Getting the drawer in there, level, eh, that's a little, that's another story. And I have a couple tricks that I've used that worked very well. I had to learn them, but um, I figured out how to get a drawer in there that it rolls straight, coming in and out. The other one is the slides. Don't cheap, buy a good slide. <laughs> Go to Home Depot. I don't recommend their slides unless you use the cheapy little white rollers. And I use that for toolbox. I make a little toolboxes and I use that for my drawers because it'll hold 150 pounds. Um, but if you're making a nice piece of furniture, I like to finish it. I finish the whole drawer inside the bottom. I spray everything. When I'm making the box itself, when I spray the top, it's off. It's not part of it. I spray it and I shoot straight down on it so I can put more on it and it doesn't run. Anytime, turn the box sideways, shoot down on it, let it go for about 35 minutes, it won't run. But if you stand it up and you walk around shooting it, you're gonna have runs. I don't care how good you are, you'll have runs. If you watch them on this, how it's made, you, you, I'm sure you've seen that on television. They show that. They actually, show, I was watching the other night and they were making a dresser and they turned it sideways. And I'm thinking, why did they turn it sideways? And the guy explained that. They were shooting it so it won't run. And it goes through a process and 30 minutes or I think it was 30 minutes later, it turns up, they shoot the top. Goes a little further down the line, turns over, they shoot the side. But they can shoot thicker doing it that way because it doesn't run. I'm done preaching. Anything else? I hope you learned something. Enjoy it, if nothing else.